Today I'm meeting with Kok. I'm interviewing him about what it means to grow up as a Luk Krung. The word Luk Krung in Thai means that one of your parents is Thai and the other one is a foreigner. It's like, no, I'm, I'm Thai. I'm Thai, right? I am also interviewing him about his one true passion. Describe who I was in one sentence. It would be um, the kid that makes temples. Actually, now my entire life has been at this moment has been temples, <laughs> and I feel like a lot of that is because I live in Thailand. But a lot of it, I don't know. I just feel that everything that I do has something to do with temples, and that's just truly what I am right now. And that's what I'm doing right now. Right I'm, now, right so now, we're gonna I mean, we're gonna have a look how you're making temples. Yeah. So I start off just a square. I'm gonna make something similar. So this one here, can you see that? Yeah, come closer yeah, a little bit. Here you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make something similar to that, so slightly smaller, but um, and um, yeah, and while we talk, I'm just gonna be making. Well, I guess we should start to uh, how I was in the beginning. So my name is uh, Coke Smith, and um, I was born in Washington State, uh, United States. It's on the northwest coast in a small town called Port Angeles. And I was born there, my mother, she's Thai. And I, and my father, he's American. So I, I grew up as a, as a half child in the US. But as I grew up in the US, I visited Thailand at least once a year. And so I've, I've been coming to Thailand all my life. But I, for the first eight years of my life, I lived in the United States. Uh, when I went to school, um, I felt like me being half was not a big deal, but, but there were some instances in which it was. Some kids uh, was like saying that, um, "Hey, uh, you can't play with us. Why not? Uh, because you're 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 half Thai." Uh, and it's like when I at the time I remember thinking, "Oh yeah, they have a point." But now when I look back, no, they're just racist assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I I was always kind of outside, like uh, kind of like outcasted. Not directly because I was not uh, fully Caucasian, but also because of my experiences as a child. My father and my mother took me on tons and tons of adventures. When I was four years old, I was chased by a bear in Russia. My father, he was a um, he used to be a travel agent, and he's a right now he's a wildlife photographer, and so he goes around the world um, taking uh, trying to find animals in the, in, in nature. And I tagged along with him when I was a kid. And when I would go back to my school in America, I would say, ah, I did this, I did that. And the teacher said, and I quote during my, my parent-teacher conference was, um, your, to my, this is to my father and my mother, uh, your son has a problem. Oh yeah, what is that? He has a problem with fibbing. What? My son lying? What? Yes. He says he goes on these adventures and uh, to Russia and all these places, and uh, it's very distracting to the class. No, 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 no. He, we actually, he actually did that. But once I moved to China, things got better in the sense that it was more accepted to be bicultural and worldly. It was a completely different experience there, but same routine. Every time we'd get, we'd go traveling, trying to find animals. Uh, I think when I was nine years old, I saw a wild panda, and the people, the guide said that I was the youngest foreigner to ever see a wild panda. Me going through these experiences of being really patient and disciplined, because either that or else my father would be very annoyed at me because he missed his animal, and I made sure I wanted to see the animal, mm. and uh, as well. And I think that kind of was maybe the starting point to me being able to do this, because it takes a lot of time. And then I moved to. Thailand. I moved to Bangkok. When we go back to the how I was as a Lup Krung in Thailand, when I was in America, I was half Amer. I was half American, half Thai, surrounded by Americans. But now I'm half American, half Thai, surrounded by Thai. And the true difference is, is that in Thailand it matters more. And in a way, it's a cool thing, and it's also a downside. 
because as a Lip Krung, you look at being handsome, you know, you're very, you're very beautiful or whatever. And, but uh, the downside is that you're not Thai. You're not Thai, you're Lip Krung, you're not Thai. And uh, you're, to a lot of people, not everyone, to a lot of people though, you'll never be Thai. Lip Krung that grew up in Thailand, they are easily assimilated. I know a lot of Lip Krungs that I know here in Koh Lanta, they're, um, they're, they're Thai. But me, I grew up in America. And now I'm trying hard to try to like uh, get to the point in which people would look past um, my other side. So then, because I want to be recognized as an equal. And that's also probably why I do uh, these temples. So this Buddha here um, that I was making, uh, this I made this today and uh, yes, and the day before. It's actually, it's the big Buddha on the hill in Phuket. And um, when uh, me and my girlfriend, we were in Phuket the other week. And uh, she's never been to temples until I introduced it to her. And she's half Thai. She's Lip Krung like me. And she knows me and she knows how I like making temples. Uh, but um, she always told, told me, Coke, I don't think you'd be ever, ever to be able to make a Buddha because it's too organic. The shapes are way too organic. And it's like, you're right, I never tried it. I never tried it. And now I tried it and I think I've succeeded. And this is gonna be her birthday present. Yeah, we had a very special moment there that really, like, that I remember, and it's like, ah, this is, it's her, it was her favorite temple in Phuket when we went, and <laughs> I thought it'd be a very nice way to show her how much I love her. There's some examples of, yeah, me going to the national park, or going to, a, like, any place where I have to, if you're Farang, you have to pay more, and it's like, oh, you, it's like, you have to pay. It's like, no, I'm, I'm Thai. I'm Thai, right? I'm Thai, right? I was in the Thai um, Reserve Army, um, uh, it was a training thing, and like only Thais are allowed to do that. And, no, it's like your face, your eyes. It's like, well, you know what? Like, I feel like. Uh, people should just look past that and just like leave it at my word to prove that I'm Thai. I, I want to leave it at my word in order and na not have to actually get a card to say it. Mm. And uh, it's 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 not a big deal honestly but it's it's something in which I shouldn't have to do. What about uh, Thai language? Is, uh, is it something you're comfortable in? Did... Um, a lot of people say I'm getting better um, but um, I've um, kind of getting a trying to develop my southern accent. Um, <laughs> so, so it's not something you got from home. No, Your mom no, didn't my speak mom, Thai to you when you were growing up. We lived in America. My mom lived in America for eleven years, and her goal was to get better at English. Right. And um, she 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 accomplished that goal uh, very well. And you speak <laughs> some South language to me? Right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe um um pom lang tai tai. So I was just saying that uh, for me, since I learned Thai, I just feel like I'm, I'm much more accepted in Thai society uh, than I was before. I feel much less like being treated as farang, you know, uh, many, many Thai people I meet all the time tell me, oh, you're just like Thai, you're like 75% Thai. Um, but of course, I'm not Thai, and they really don't see me as Thai. Uh, but for you, it's it's a very different situation because you I, are Thai. I am Thai, but uh, I, to a lot of people's eyes, I'm not. But then when I show that I can do this, yeah, and I know the background about it and uh, the history of it, and um, so much about it, then they see actually, you know, this kid's more than just a Farang. <laughs> right, right. So so this helps them to. To, to include you more yeah. in, in Thai society. Mm. Yeah. Lalita is like, uh, your, your, is it your first Lukrun girlfriend? Let's yes. say like that? Yeah, I think um, I've never been into, this is super long, I've never been in a super long relationship. And this has been on seven months now from this video. And but you're, you're 19, right? Yes. So yeah. it's, it fits well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she grew up here in Thailand and so she, she has it easier than me. And uh, but she understands me, though, because she is also Lip Krung. Her mother is from England, and she's on Lanta, which you are surrounded by expats all the time, uh, tourists all the time from all over Europe. And so 
we have so much in common on that basis and we have a deep understanding with each other. You're two different people, East and West combined to make one person. And so it's gonna, you're gonna be, there's gonna be a very unique uh, outcome. And I feel like I can only have something in common with someone else like that. So this is where you live. Mm -hmm. That's, That's unbelievable. Every every morning, uh, the tide when the if the tide is out further, and, and I wake up at six, and that's when the sun rises. And I love walking here with my cup of coffee and just walking around here, and then and then I go to work. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? When I show my bot, my ID, it's like uh, it's like I'm, I'm Thai, and but there's like um, but the people never say ah Ben Kwan Thai, my Thai. They always say, ah, the crew. Mm. Ah, the crew. They would never call me a Thai. Right. They won't, once they know I'm a Lup Krung, they won't call me Farang. Right. But they will call me a Lup Krung. Yeah. So I'm curious. I, I always analyze what does that actually mean? Does that mean I am Thai? But, um, or does it mean, no, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not quite Thai by us. You're, you're just, you're Lup Krung. Mm. And so. Tell me called Thai, do video need. Chai, chai, walk night, comment, wa, look, hung, penyangai, and you can pen sing TD, rawa, sing TMD, rawa, shemai, poa, chai, 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 so far, at least, uh, the, 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 the almost the downsides of it, the, the complaints in a way. But I feel like it um, doesn't make me sad or anything. I'm very happy. I'm extremely happy when I'm here, and I'm I'm actually so happy that I can face these differences. I'm also a mother of a Lukun. Yeah. You know, so looking mm -hmm. at them, I know for sure, hundred percent, that what they have is double what mm. most kids have who have only one culture yeah because they have double the languages and they have double the cultures and they have double the places where they can fit and mm. where they can easily adapt so they have double the choice yeah so this right here is a model i've been making for almost a year now of the city of ayutthaya the old capital of siam uh, during the 1700s and what i'm holding here is the grand palace of ayutthaya and this is Wat Plasi San Pet. So right here is the palace. This is the river. And then you zoom out, that's the city of Utia. It's completely destroyed today. And I'm recre recreating it as of what it used to look like. And I'll zoom in here on some of the details in yeah. which... Maybe you can explain, like, if course. you have something there that you want to talk mm. about it. Like so these... Explain. So right here is Wat Prasi San Pet. It was the main temple, it was the king's temple. And it was the only temple uh, that had no monks uh, living there. It was because it was meant for the king. And you see here, you have three jetties. One here, one here, one here. And each one has a king, uh, king's relics it's installed. Thailand back in the day where this city existed, it, it uh, was destroyed in 1767 to 1782, that's when it was demolished. Uh, it was much more accepting and tolerance towards foreigners than arguably today. Um, in fact, back then, this is the most, you know, most accepting place on earth uh, for religion ever. Um, there were Catholic churches, there were mosques. Uh, right there is a mosque, right? that blue roof right there, that's a mosque in the city. And sure, Ayutthaya had so many temples. So Ayutthaya had mosques in... Many, yeah, mosques. Uh, the, the king would wear French robes and, and sometimes wore Persian robes as well to show his... And uh, there were samurai uh, as personal guard for the king. And then uh, there were the prime minister, the equivalent of prime minister uh, was a Greek man. The king was like, everyone can come in and they can believe whatever they want and they can be whoever they want. And in fact, you can even become as high up as, almost as high up as the king himself, in some instances. Which is such a contrast towards the point of view in which foreigners can't even own land today. It's your life work when you're 19. <laughs> what are you going to do when you're 90? 
So you're making a temple now? Yeah, so I'm making this structure here on the screen. Uh, it's called Wat Du Sitaram. It's, in, it's a not so well-known temple in Yutia, but it's a, from a historical perspective, it's quite significant. This temple here is probably my favorite temple. My ancestors pro definitely contributed to, to the construction of it a thousand years ago. And it's Wat Pratat in Nakon Sitamarat. And right here is a side-by-side -side image of um, my photo that I took against the model that I made. Toothpicks. <laughs> so toothpicks? Yeah, yeah. And sang some bottles. Pretty much uh, boxes, not bottles. <laughs> boxes. Did yeah, I say bottles? Yeah, you said <laughs> Sorry. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I don't drink all the boxes, but, uh. Yeah, that was my next question. Are you no, are I'm you not, drinking not, so much? I'm not an alcoholic. No, but I get donations from uh, bars, and um, saying some boxes just tend to be the best material, as well as um, cigarette cartons. <laughs> it's like that's probably the worst thing you can do is uh, drink and smoke. But um, well, you can make temples out of it. You know. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah. And then you you use a lot of the paints. Yeah, as well? I use paints. I use paints. I use a gold leaf as well. A pen. Pen is also my friend. Yeah, I do a lot of pen. Like, here you see. This is all pen detail on top of the paint. And then I finish it off by spraying it with a varnish in order to seal everything in so then it doesn't get the paints and the details don't get damaged. And that's and then you get also a shiny quality to it. it fits right in here. My drive is what I can make in the future with this. That city over there is very valuable information because there has never been a model of that city like that ever. There's been like ancient models of Rome, of what the entire city of ancient Rome used to look like. And um, I want to give the same thing to a Utia, to a Thai city. Oh, they want thumbnail to see your face and the temple. Exactly. Oh, I like that one, what I see on you. That looks great. Did you, did you get anything Thai from your mom? I certainly did. I think um, she introduced me to her family, and that's all completely Thai, 100% Thai like totally southern totally so i i can eat uh, a lot of i can eat anything and like spicy i can eat as spicy as any thai can na pick up it sata oh chop sata mak rơi na ờ rồi and um i yeah i can eat gang som i love gang som <laughs> so it's part of your like heritage oh yeah thai yeah. food and uh, if the, in my opinion if the food is not spicy it's not good my pet my kin right